Today is a very special day because I have a customer that is a shining example of how to keep bonsai nicely. And he has taken so much care to look after his bonsai that when he goes on holiday, he leaves his trees at Herons to care for. And I can see why, because every single tree is virtually immaculate. If you come close, these are the trees, some of the trees, which are here. There isn't a single brown leaf or a scorched leaf. And if we go to the trolley, please, uh, Joe, we we'll have a look. I'll tell you why I'm doing this video. We were about to load our customer's trees into his car. And I said to myself, this is too good an opportunity to miss. Because as I said to you, this is a shining example of how bonsai should be kept. And so much so that I've offered to give uh, this gentleman some tips. Now, let me come to uh, Felix here. And this is Felix. Look at him wearing my hair and shirt. I'm really flattered. And he's the gentleman who looks after or has grown these lovely trees. And if you can just say something about yourself, how long you've been doing bonsai. I know you've grown those Scots pine from seed, didn't you? Which is absolutely amazing, about six or seven of them or more from seed. Okay, so far away. So um, I started bonsai uh, about six years ago. Um, having been born in Japan, I've always had an interest oh. in it. And when I stopped work, rather than playing golf, I thought I would do something that uh, took up probably about the same amount of time. Um, in looking after looking after bonsai trees um, and I get an awful lot of enjoyment out of it and I started off by seeing whether I could actually keep a tree alive um, and have progressed on from that to wiring and shaping. So your interest in bonsai is merely because you lived in Japan? Yes, okay. yes and I uh, in in retirement I wanted okay. I wanted to uh, yeah I wanted to do something creative. Okay, right. So you certainly have been creative. So much so that I'm going to now ask Felix for the privilege of perhaps working on some of these trees just to give a few tips for what it's worth and uh, show what the potential uh, is for each of these trees. And we will now wheel the trolley there and do some work. So rather than just take them home after keeping them here, we will just give some tips on how to improve them a little bit further. Okay. So tell me something about this English yew, uh, Felix, because it's extremely well grown, just needs a little bit of haircut and a tiny bit of styling. Yeah, um, this tree uh, was first constructed in one of your workshops uh, How about, many about three years three, ago. Before the lockdown? Yeah. Okay. And um, it was a straight up and down tree. <laughs> um, you suggested that I, I cascade it, so I okay. wired it down. Yes, I took so the wire took one branch down, yes. I, I took the wire off about 18 months ago. Okay. Um, because it was biting it. Yeah, so the cascade part is set nicely. Um, and I was really struggling to keep it fit and healthy um, because I was keeping it too out in the out in the open okay. in, in the sun. I've since put it in, uh, keep it in shade. I actually keep it under the patio table. Okay, all right. <laughs> and uh, it's green. greened up um, beautifully. Okay. It's also why some of the uh, branches curve okay. around. Right, so uh, what would you do the next step? I know that if you leave everything to grow, it makes the tree very strong, which is good. But at some stage, we need to bring it back to its uh, uh, designed shape. Uh, Indeed. Uh, so pers the, personally, I would the decide... The cascading bit, yeah, this, the pad is very nice. It's like a yeah. big long pad. I would first decide on which was the front. Which is... Which, what would you say is the front? Personally, I would say that that yes, was the, that this, was the, that was the, the front. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. And then I would um, prune things back a little okay. bit so you could see would the like ramifications. Go? No, please lead on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we just prune the ends to make it tidy. So we're just doing a tidying up exercise. So this long branch is treated like a pad, I've been, like the palm of your hand, and like a fish bone, triangular shape, wide at the base, narrowing towards the tip. And then we can select branches to wire to give more definition. We, we may need to rewire again. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, then the top. I always tell people, the first thing to do is just prune it roughly to shape. And then think about the detailed one. Just giving it a rough haircut. There's a good start. For those who are new to bonsai, when you think that you've just been doing bonsai six years from absolute scratch and this tree has been only trained for like three years, you're doing extremely well. So all the tree is there. I didn't really do anything except prune the long branches off. So with a cascade, there's a little top there like a small tree. And then we need to show the trunk because the trunk is getting uh, obscured. We want to show a little more of the trunk. So, and the little tree at the top, the tree cascade is like a small bonsai at the top. It's all there, it's just that the vigorous growth is hiding it. So we want to show that curly part. Huh? And this is the side branch. So this is the effect we want. So I can now see the trunk. deprive you of the pleasure of working on the tree. So each of these branches you have to wire out to keep flat. And this one perhaps spring down a little more because it's tending to spring up. You're doing the right thing by keeping an eye on the wire marks because not everyone likes the branches or the trunk to be marked. So you took the wire off in time, but because some of the branches are springing up again, it would be better to wire the whole thing again. So if I can just use, this is a two and a half mil wire to go all the way to the tip of the cascade. And then taking it up there. English yew is a very lovely species to work on and if you can get hold of some really thick specimens you can do carving and all sorts of things to it. Here. 
So while the tree is growing, you can manipulate the wire to give it more shape. Got to then choose which branches to keep and which branches to remove. You don't want too many, <laughs> otherwise, it becomes a mess. Less is more. Yeah, less is more, absolutely. Alternate branches to wire. So I'm going to put it and then you can wire these. I don't want to do all the work because I know that a lot of people get pleasure from doing it. So these are the things you need to wire. So I'm just giving you the rough guide. And you wire it out like a palm, do you? Yeah, flat. So these are all, you can see that. You flatten these, flatten these. So you flatten all these. So you can see the structure. We've redefined the structure as it were. So you can see how it's growing and hopefully when this gets nice and thick, the tree will be really nice. That S is very nice. I don't think you should be able to lose it. It's set, it'll set for life. Just keep control of the branches. So that's a very quick demonstration of how you can take it further on. So from scratch done three years ago at our workshop, how nice is that? So full marks for keeping it so well. Now let's look at some of your I can see that you've already done some wiring now. You have many pines. Can you just say something about your pines? Uh, yes, um, the pines uh, that I have, uh, I bought as uh, tiny seedlings. Uh, I did it solely to uh, provide myself with some uh, with some raw material to um, to try out some bonsai techniques on. So these are six years from seed, six years from seed, and already thicker than my thumb. So for those of you who grow from seed, it is something to aspire to because I always say to people, growing from seed is a slow process, but if you can get such a nice tree in six years, you're doing extremely well. And there's no reason why none of you other viewers should uh, have a go at the same thing. Now, I noticed that you've wired some of this, which is very nice, but uh, I think you need to do it to all of them. So this has been done. And of course, Scott's pines bud back so easily. Let me wire one which has not been wired at all. Okay, this one is right from wiring. Let's keep this aside. Let's look at this one. This one has not been wrong, so, but it's got so much potential. So what do I do? I'll show you what I would do to it. I'm going to look for the potential S shape because they're all very flexible. That's the beauty of Scott, Scott Pine. They're very, very bendable. So you can create some lovely shapes. Now, if I'm going to wire, I usually pluck some of the needles off and just leave the needles at the tips because when the wire is going to go on these little branches, you don't want the wire to trap the needles. So it's quite safe to do a bit of plucking of the needles like so. Did you raise the seedlings in ordinary flower pots to begin with? Yes, I did. So for how long did you keep them in flower pots? Um, until about 18 months, two years Is ago. Is that all? Oh. And, uh, and then I, you put I, them in training pots? Bonsai training pots? Bonsai, bonsai training pots. Um, After two years. Oh. So, um, and I kept potting them on. 
Um, okay. So I started with a with very small pots, um, killing so, killing a few along the okay, way man. as you always do. <laughs> now. For most people, I remember back in the 70s when we started bonsai, and bonsai was still in its infancy in this country. Many so-called bonsai hobbyists in the UK simply grew conifers in little pots and put them in patty dishes and called them bonsai. They never bothered to wire or even prune them. Just in a small pot and it was called a bonsai, which certainly it wasn't. But I'll just show you what uh, a, lot, a lot of potential you can get out of these trees by simple wiring processes. Okay, so a tree like this, what I would look for straight away is that uh, I don't have to have the tree that tall. It's so flexible I can wire the whole thing and get a tree like this shape. Okay, that's quite easy to do. If I didn't want to grow it tall, I can even cut that off and use this the leader and make it like that. So there's so many different options. But let's take the safer option where I don't do so much uh, drastic cutting, but we will just wire the trunk to see what shape comes out of it. Now, and what about slope style? How do you would, mean? Would you not do the slanting? slanting? Uh, usually pines like this, I think the informed upright shape is more mm. pleasing. Agreed, um, agreed. Yeah. Cascade, see it's so flexible I could even make it a cascade. We might try one as a cascade, but this one, because it's leaning like this and coming back, and you see, without even splitting the trunk, I can see that I can get a beautiful informal upright or what we call the S shape. So let us proceed to give an S shape to this tree. The advantage, of course, of doing trunk splitting is that when you split the trunk, the marks of the split, of the splitting process, gives it character. It makes the bark look older much sooner. Talking of bud break, if cameraman, you come close, you see all these little buds. People always say to me, Scott's pine don't break back from all wood. Look at it, it's breaking back from the trunk. It just shows how easy it is to break back from the trunk. Okay, okay, now let's put the wire on and give it the initial bend. Word of warning with Scots Pine, they're so vigorous that you've got to keep an eye on the uh, wire marks if you don't want it to mark. They do mark very rapidly, very quickly. But as I say, some people don't uh, get worried about wire marks because the wire marks, when they grow out, or even if they remain, add so much character to the tree. And because this is a flexible trunk, I think one piece of wire would probably be sufficient to get the bend that I want. Okay. Now, called stirring the pot. See what a tight bend I have created. Okay. So, with that tight bend, we have a choice of the branches. Maybe even, I think this is looking nice as a front. Although this is a young plant, already there are too many branches, I think. Although you keep these, it will help to thicken the trunk. But there is one glaring branch that I think we can get rid of. So let us get rid of this one. As you said yourself, less is more. Looks better already. Okay. So we've got branches here. These I would keep some of them because they will help to thicken the trunk. They will help to thicken the trunk. The only problem is that if we keep these lower branches for too long, the other branches may be too thick, but let it develop, no harm. So we will proceed to wire these two branches or wire this one certainly. Uh, Okay. And you keep the lower branch, do you? I will keep the lower branch, yes. Keep these. So we'll wire these. So, let's see. I'm really surprised how flexible these branches are, although they're quite thick. They're so easily 
wire will, they will bend exceptionally easily. By plucking the needles, you also encourage or you stimulate bud development. So you'll get new buds coming along the branch, like so. You see these buds come up. If you pull these needles up, you will get the buds coming much sooner. Trap those little needles. This is two mil wire. Two mil wire is the most commonly used wire. Two mil in aluminium, that is. Then trap it, I will just leave a slightly open coil. And then there's one branch on its own. If it's on its own, I can still wire it. I will link it to an existing wide branch. Like so. Do you feed these trees? I, I do feed them. I have a um, I have a squirrel and bird problem. So every time I feed it with rape or what, what, whatever yeah. I do, whether it's cakes um, or I tried making a paste out of it this year, the it. squirrels <laughs> and the birds take it. Yeah. So uh, I'm afraid I have to give it the good stuff, the Naruko which okay. they don't touch. I see. I'll feed them about um, for three months, three okay. feeds early on in the growing season uh, and one in the autumn. Okay, now these two branches seem to be crying out to be wired together, so I'll wire these two together. But if you come closer, cameraman, I don't want this to grow too long I can make this the leading shoot. I will take that off and wire it like that. You see? So this can carry on as the new leader for that shoot. Let me see if I can do the same with that. Maybe I will thin this a little bit. Mind you, these pines are so vigorous. You do have to control the growth. And always, you've been, I can see you've done it. You've taken the tips out. You've done that. So it stimulates more ramification even with pines you do get ramification okay so the next grade of wire to use is probably this one which is three three mil so i'm going to i do decandle them every year okay good You are plucking the needles off.
try to work from the side so that I don't obscure the camera. It's like trying to work with the tree in front of you or doing like flower arranging demonstration. Very difficult. Okay, so that should do with this one. And this one should go here. There you are, this is a, what we call a classic S shape. I think it could be planted at a slight tilt in the back and the tree book forward. So this is your informal upright S. So all these other pines, the scope for choosing the S. Okay, Same with this. none of these have been wired. You can see, viewers can see, none of these have been wired. So you can wire them all to get that shape. And remember, if you don't want it to go too tall, you can always take a side branch and make that the leader rather than keep taking the normal leader. Take that as leader and make it a shorter tree. So that's how you do. Would now be the time, Peter, to select what branches at this point. To no, you've done it. It's inverse. three. Inverse, yes. So would you now reduce the number of branches no, there? Three is ideal. I think I can see there's a problem there, but maybe reduce the vigor of this. So if it is too vigorous, if you take that off. So you make the tree thinner, then you're not putting so much energy into the tree. So you can control the vigor by doing that. Did you understand what Joe was pointing out, if you have too many yes. branches at one point, you get what is called inverse taper. So keep reducing the shoots there, so you make it less vigorous. Than and that want. reduces the knuckle, does it? That's right, it will, by doing that. See, then you can still wall it. See, like this one, you can make that the leader, you see? You can make that the leader. Rather, see, so you get a better taper. Can I do this for you? Yeah, sure. Drastic, huh? <laughs> there it was gone. <laughs> okay, so you can do that and then bend that back so you reduce the vigor so it won't be so vigorous, huh? So you can do that one. So many interesting things. Now, this one. This one's not very healthy. No, it's. I worry about that. It one. doesn't produce so many, but, but it's budding back. There are lots of bud back there. Again, you can do the S shape. I'm just trying to see if I can make a cascade out of it. You can try doing this. So you see what I've done? Like that and make a head. You can do that without branch splitting, can you? Without branch splitting. I see it's doing that. Just heavy wire you do. Heavy wire. Yeah? Shall I start it for you? Yes. <laughs> Okay, since you men mentioned branch splitting, let's do a bit of branch splitting so that viewers can see. Although I've shown it so many times, so branch splitting simply, for those who have not seen it before, we are making a, one single thick piece of wood into a composite of two thinner pieces. As with plywood, so let me turn the tree around this way, it's easier to handle this way. So I'm going to use the brown splitter to split the thick trunk into two thinner pieces. Because I'm going to twist the tree quite severely, it will help it to slide better. And this will also help thicken the trunk because when it heals, it will form a new sort of shape. And do I need to wrap it with raffia? You don't have to. You don't have to. Because I find that pines have their own resin, which is like a sealant. It acts as a sealant. I think with juniper, it is more important to wrap it, but you don't have to use raffia. I'm very fond of using ordinary masking tape. 
Masking tape works extremely well. You want make paper masking tape like this. See? I use masking tape. That can also work. You don't have to, but you can if you wish. Just put masking tape on it. Okay, so let's use a really thick grid of wire. I might need two, but let's see if one will do. You want to do it, Felix? Have a no, I'm happy to. I'm happy to watch and learn. <laughs> I always feel guilty hogging the show because I feel like you learn more by doing it yourself. Anyway, okay, so. I always have this perennial uh, debate as to whether wiring clockwise or anti-clockwise is the best. Is there a general rule, Peter? No, off late. I find that this way, which clockwise is my preferred way. There is no right and a wrong. If you're left-handed, I'm not left-handed. I think a left-handed person may do it differently. I don't know. But when it comes to bending the trunk, depending on which way you've wound it, it does make a difference. It can undo itself if you do it the wrong way. See, like this is not doing anything. Okay, I'm, I'm still bending it clockwise. But if I did it this way, you see, it'll unwind Sorry. the wire. Can you yeah. see? Mm -hmm. It's unwinding the wire. So if you do it anti-clockwise, it opens it out. So if I have put the wire on clockwise, you've got to do the bending clockwise as well. So I'm trying to achieve this effect. So rather than come straight down, I'm giving a curve to curl down like so. That's the effect I've created. And as it grows, you can do more. Perhaps if you repot mm -hmm. the tree, maybe come spring, repot it at that angle, you know, to help it along. Like so. We put it at that angle. See, just one piece of wire, it's so effective. It just shows how flexible these scotch pines are. And then you can encourage one of these branches to go to make a head, because all cascades have a little head. So this is only the first stage. Let it grow some more and then see how it develops like that. So that is going to be your ultimate design, like so. No? You get the idea? So at least you can see the direction in which this is meant to go. So you see, if you bend it this way, even more pronounced, see, that would be nice. No? And in February, put yeah. it into a nice cascade pot mm -hmm. to get Just it. a training pot, you know, for now, yeah, at that angle. So you can try the different angles. So that is that one done. Now, in the time available, I must show you, I'll show the viewers. This is a beautiful piece, Enoki Cypress. Please tell us the history of this tree. Um, I bought this tree from Herons. Really? Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, apparently, Peter wants it back. <laughs> <laughs> Bought from our nursery. How many years ago? Three um, years? Probably four years four ago. Four years ago. Good grief. My goodness me, you can't see. No, these I'm not sure are grafted. They're probably one of our young plants. And how big was it when you bought it? It Half was. Half the size? No. No, um, it was only slightly smaller than okay, that. Okay, but you not, thinned it out. You thinned I, thinned, it out. I, I, I always thin it out. I yes, always okay. pinch it out. Um, Look at it. Let me turn it around. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that. And then a small one at the side. Did you make a cutting from that, or is that a small tree? Uh, no, that was uh, that was how I bought it. Okay. 
It's a small so tree. I'm not going to uh, deny you the pleasure of thinning. You need to thin it out a little more, but so healthy, so healthy. I don't think you need to trim much. Some people grow their hinokis with heavy pruning, but look at it. I just wanted to show people how a hinoki cypress should be grown. Absolutely green. Again, what fertilizer do you use? Naruko. Naruko, okay. Okay, so just a bit of pruning. So when you prune for viewers, just don't shear the foliage like that, you'll make it brown. Just go into the wood and take it out from like that. So that's how you prune, like that. Tip of the scissor like that. But it's just to show viewers an example of tree purchased from herons as a starter tree and in four years look at it it certainly does me proud just a little more pouring and it will be a lovely specimen so i hope viewers have enjoyed this little exercise where i show you how trees should be kept in this lovely condition and of course felix brings it here most years for most holiday years. care holiday care for just two weeks, so while you're away, and we look after his trees, but I'm really delighted to see that some people can keep their trees so well. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you, Felix, very much. You're welcome.